Hi guys, welcome to this set of videos. What we're going to do here in this set of videos is we're going to continue our discussion on the geometry that we can do with circles. All right? We've already looked at several different things here dealing with circles in this chapter. And what we're going to do now in this section, this set of notes in these videos, is actually introduce you to a couple of ideas that we just want you to start thinking about. Okay, here's what we're going to talk about. Here in this section, we're going to introduce you to something called a tangent line. Tangent line, and then what we call a circumscribed angle. Sorry, hang on. I need that to be a B, not a D. Circumscribed angle. All right, so in this section, we're not really going to do uh, problems in the traditional sense, like what you're used to, what we've done so far this year, where we use some geometry to set up a problem, and then you do a bunch of algebra to solve it. That's not what we're going to do in this section. What, I, what we want to do here is just introduce you to these two ideas, these two concepts. What is a tangent line? What is a circumscribed angle? We want to get you thinking about what these are because then in later sections, actually the next two sections of this chapter, we're then going to use these ideas to do more traditional problems where we'll set up some sort of problem using the geometry and then algebra to solve. So here we go, this section introducing you to a couple of ideas. First are Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. That's the title of our lesson, Tangents and Circumscribed Angles. Our essential question, there we go. What are the key theorems about tangents to a circle, all right? So again, introducing this idea. What are some things that we can learn, understand, know about tangent lines and circumscribed angles that'll help us, help us later on solve problems. The way we're going to do that is simply investigate and help you to understand some of these theorems about tangent lines and tangent to circles. So with that in mind, here we go. What is a tangent line? Okay. Actually pretty simple idea. A tangent line is simply going to be a, oh wait, sorry, that's my pen and I want a highlighter, my bad. There's my highlighter. Simple, simple, simple idea. A tangent line is going to be a line drawn so that it intersects the circle at exactly one point. Now, there is an infinite number of tangent lines. You could draw the tangent line like I have here, right? There's a tangent line. I could also draw a tangent line over here or down here or over here. You can draw a tangent line anywhere. The only condition is that it intersects the circle at exactly one point. One, that's the only condition, that's it. It must intersect the circle at exactly one point. Doesn't matter where you draw it. I can draw tangent lines all over the place. There, there, there. Again, I'm freehanding them, but the point is this. I'm intersecting the circle at exactly one point. Every single one of those is a tangent line and you can draw them anywhere on the circle. All right, so there's an infinite number of tangent lines. The only condition intersects the circle at exactly one point. Now, we have a name for that point. It's actually important enough that we give it its own name and we call it the point of tangency. That is the point where the tangent line intersects the circle. So the point of tangency, point P right there, that is the point where the tangent line intersects the circle. All right, so that's the way that these guys are going to work. For us, this is at point P. Right there is our point of tangency, where our tangent line intersects our circle. So what is a tangent line? It's a line drawn so that it intersects the circle at one point. That point is called the point of tangency. Okay, with that information then, we have a theorem about tangents couple of theorems actually. The first one is simply this. If a tangent, er, I'm sorry, 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 if a tangent, if a line is tangent to a circle, then it will be perpendicular to the radius. 
at the point of tangency. So you draw any tangent line. Again, there's an infinite number of tangent lines. I can draw my tangent line anywhere around that circle. The only condition is that it must intersect the circle at one point, the point of tangency. Now, if you draw a radius from the center of the circle to that point of tangency, no matter where it's at, it's going to form a 90 degree angle, all right? They're, they have to be perpendicular. That's what the theorem says. So a tangent line and the radius will always be perpendicular if they meet at the point of tangency, which then brings us to a converse. The converse is simply this. If I don't tell you it's a tangent line, but you have a line that intersects the circle at one point and it's perpendicular to the radius, then it must be a tangent line, right? Then it is a tangent to the circle. So if I tell you it's a tangent line and a radius, you'll know they're perpendicular. But if all I do is tell you they're perpendicular, you can also then conclude it has to be a tangent line, all right? So just depending on the information that you're given, you can either, knowing it's a tangent line, know what the measure of the angle is, or if I give you the measure of the angle, you can determine, oh, that must be a tangent line. All right, here's the way this is going to work. Uh, just to sort of see how you're doing with this idea of tangent lines, I've just got something for you to consider right here, a problem. So here's what I've got for you. I have a diagram drawn here where I tell you both lines in the figure are tangent lines. All right, so I got two lines. Let me do them in different colors for you. I've got this line right here, line A, and I've got this line right here, call it line B. I tell you, I tell you, both of those lines are tangent lines. Now, I have a AB which is a diameter. Let me do that in yellow. So right here you have a diameter. How do I know it's a diameter? Well, it goes through the center of the circle, goes through the center, and intersects the circle at two points. So that's got to be a diameter. I want to know what can you conclude about the tangent lines. Okay, so based on the theorems that we just looked at, we just looked at, I tell you they're tangent lines, I tell you they're tangent lines, right? And if you split this line AB right here at the middle, right, I have two radiuses. I, in fact, if I call this point C for the center of the circle, right, then line AC is a radius and line CB is a radius. So this goes back to that previous theorem. I have a tangent line and a radius, what do I know about the angle? Well, I know that it has to be 90 degrees. In fact, I know that they both have to be 90 degrees. So, based on the theorem that we just looked at, the tangent radius theorem, based on the tangent radius theorem, I have two 90 degree angles. Or call them right angles. Okay, so what? Well, here's what. Back in chapter four, Section two, I know this is going way, way back in again. If you're taking this class with a, a different teacher and you just happen to be watching these videos, you may be using a slightly different book and it could be in a different chapter. But back in the chapter where we talked about parallel lines, right? Parallel lines cut by a transversal, which for us was back in chapter four, section two, we talked about this theorem. We talked about the same side interior angle postulate.
All right, so we have the same side interior angle postulate, and in case you've forgotten what that particular postulate was, because chapter four was quite a while ago for us, here's what it said. If same side interior angles, which is exactly what I've got here, right? I have two lines, two lines, cut by a transversal. So these are same side interior angles. What the postulate said is if the measure of those angles are supplementary, if they sum to 180 degrees, then the lines have to be parallel. So here's what it said. If the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 180 degrees, then the lines are parallel. That's what the postulate said. So if the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 180 degrees, then these two lines must be parallel. They have to be parallel. Well, look at what we've got. I have a right angle and a right angle, which means I have 90 degrees plus 90 degrees, which is 180 degrees. So the question is, what can I conclude about the tangent lines? I know they're parallel. So let me erase this stuff right here because we know that they're right angles. I need a little bit of space. I can conclude they are parallel lines. I can conclude they are parallel. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, holy cow, geez, that was so long ago. Am I really expected to remember that? Yes, I've been saying it to you all through this course. Everything we've learned from previous chapters comes back. Some stuff comes back more than other things, like vertical angles or the um, uh, segment addition postulate or angle addition postulate. There are certain things that we see more than other things. But this is not a new idea in math, right? All the previous information, right? We build on it in consecutive chapters. And so all of that prior information is really, really important and can come back. What makes geometry maybe more challenging than other math classes is the degree to which that prior information is important and is required for you to remember later on. Like this case, I mean, this was one theorem of a dozen that we looked at in that chapter and they expect you to remember it. Yeah, yeah, that's the way geometry works. Um, you, you've got to, you can't forget anything. It's not possible to move on to the next chapter and what we did in the previous chapter just goes away. Oh, I don't need it anymore. That's not the way this works. So um, going back to chapter four, same side interior angle postulate, I know that those two lines then have to be parallel. Head on over to the next page of the notes. We'll look at those what we call circumscribed angles uh, just to give you a little bit more information about them before moving on and using that to solve problems. I'll meet you on the next page of the notes.